Greetings all, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 5B, Quantifying Work and Energy. <clears throat> now we should note immediately, uh, before we even begin, that uh, work and energy are scalar quantities, that is, none of these are vectors. Uh, work and energy do not have a direction. Some of the quantities involved here uh, can be considered negative, but it doesn't have anything to do with their direction because there is no direction. Uh, this may seem to be uh, a little counterintuitive uh, because we're going to be looking at quantities that depend on velocity and position and displacement and force, and these are all vectors. Um, but once again, work and energy are not vectors ever. All right, now work and energy are measured in joules. Uh, the unit symbol is a capital J. Uh, the unit is named after James Joule, was a physicist from the 1800s. He studied the relationship between mechanical energy and heat, uh, which led him to the law of conservation of energy, which we'll see a little bit later. Uh, the joule is a derived unit. It comes about by multiplying uh, newtons in meters, so newtons times meters. Uh, there are lots of units of energy uh, used in various uh, measurement systems, calories, uh, BTUs, electron volts, kilowatt hours, foot pounds, etc. Uh, we're only going to be dealing with joules here. So if you look at the conversion down the bottom, uh, one joule is equal to one newton meter. If we then take the newtons and put kilogram meter per second squared, we get this version here, kilogram meter squared per second squared in fundamental physics units. All right, so now we're going to look at the quantities and the symbols and the methods by which uh, each is calculated. So uh, K, uh, capital K, is uh, kinetic energy. Uh, this is uh, one-half mv squared. Again, we know kinetic energy already is the energy of motion. Uh, the m is the mass that we're familiar with, and the v is velocity. Okay, so very simply, one half mv squared. Um, we see in the formula that only the velocity is squared. It's a common mistake uh, for students to multiply mass times velocity and then square it. That's wrong. So one half times mass times velocity squared. Uh, next, we have gravitational potential energy, U sub G, capital U sub G. Formula is M times G times H. M is the mass. G is the acceleration due to gravity. H is the height above what we're going to call H sub zero. Uh, you'll notice that the, um, the H sub zero is uh, the elevation at which H equals zero. It's effectively the vertical origin. Uh, you may be told uh, what H sub zero is, particularly when you do a web assigned problem. Uh, later on, you may need to decide the H sub zero for yourself. Uh, makes the most sense to assign H sub zero as the lowest elevation that the object is likely to reach. Uh, we would say the ground or the floor, uh, maybe the lab desktop if you're doing an experiment. Uh, this way, the gravitational potential energy, U sub G, uh, is never negative. Once you assign H sub zero, <clears throat> all the heights in the problem must be measured from that point. So, again, it is effectively a, a vertical origin. Now we have uh, U sub S, or elastic potential energy. Uh, the S typically is used to indicate spring energy. Um, quantified it's one half k x squared k is the spring constant x is the deformation uh, for the time being don't worry if you don't recognize the symbols uh, next up we're going to look very closely at elasticity and elastic behavior and you'll learn what these quantities mean <coughs> now next up we have the work done by an applied force fa um, the work done is Fa times D times the cosine of theta. Fa is the applied force, so we're familiar already. D is the uh, distance or the displacement. 
and theta is the angle between the vectors f a and d. Um, typically applied forces tend to do positive work. Um, they usually transfer energy uh, into the system or they add energy to the object. Uh, they can also remove it, uh, kind of depending on the angle between the force and the displacement. We'll look at that a little more closely later on. Now we also have uh, work done by friction. Let's change this while we're thinking about it. Work done by friction um, is equal to mu times Fn times D. <clears throat> You'll note that the negative sign indicates that uh, friction typically does negative work. It removes energy from the system. Fn we're familiar with, the normal force. D is the distance. Mu we know already. Um, Again, they, they friction forces tend to do negative work. Um, friction, for that reason, is called a dissipative force. The work it does gets um, dissipated as waste heat. So the object heats up, the floor heats up, and that energy ends up being radiated away as, uh, as waste heat. Notice that this formula is in a blue box. This one is not on the formula sheet. So this is one you'll have to remember. Now we want to take uh, a closer look at the work done by the applied force. We have uh, described work as the transfer of energy from one object to another. Um, if the work done by on an object is positive, it uh, tends to add energy to the object. <clears throat> if the work done is negative, it removes energy from the object. So let's consider uh, an applied force with some elevation angle theta, as shown here. We've got a displacement to the right and an applied force to the right and up. Uh, the amount of work done, easy enough, the amount of work done is Fa times D times cosine of theta. Uh, we want to think about what that means. Um, the displacement is to the right and the force is to the right and up. The angle theta is, is between these two vectors. So if we were to sort of rearrange the formula and write it as Fa cosine theta times D, we can see that this Fa cosine theta is effectively the X component of the applied force. So what this tells us is that only the component of the force that's in the direction of the displacement actually does any work. In this case, the x component, which is horizontal, because it's in the direction of the displacement, does work. The y component of Fa, Fa sine theta, which points up, doesn't do any work at all because there is no displacement in that direction. So now what if the displacement were in a diff different direction? Uh, we have a similar force here to the right and up, uh, but the displacement of this object is in the y direction. Um, only the y component of the force does any work here because it's got to be in the direction of the displacement. In order to use the formula consistently, we would have to figure out the angle between the force and the displacement, which is kind of this angle in here. Um, we can see from the arrangement here that it would be 90 minus theta. So the work done by this applied force would be FAD times the cosine of 90 minus theta. Alright, so here we have another case. Uh, again, we have a, the applied force to the right and up, but the object is moving to the left or the displacement is to the left in the negative x direction. Uh, what we find here is that the work done by this applied force is actually negative. The angle between the force and the displacement is 180 minus theta. You can see it kind of here, this angle here. You'll find that the cosine of this angle uh, would be negative. Okay, so um, in this case the, the horizontal component or the x component of this applied force does negative work. The horizontal component of the force points to the right and the displacements to the left. So, in other words, the 
the the x component of the applied force is in the opposite direction of the displacement so it's going to take energy away and again the vertical component here does no work because there's no displacement in that direction all right so we have a series of diagrams uh, you can take a look at them and decide which component does any work and if that work is positive or negative remember that the work done is positive if the applicable force component and the displacement are in the same direction even if that direction is to the left or down alright so in this example we have FA to the right and up and the displacement is uh, straight down we would say here that the Y component of FA does negative work because it points up in the opposite direction of the displacement and the X component of FA doesn't do any work at all. We have another one here. FA is to the left and up. Displacement is to the right. In this case the X component points left in the opposite direction of the displacement so it does negative work. The Y component does no work. Here we have FA to the left and down. Displacement is up. In this case, the Y component does negative work. It's in the opposite direction. The X component does no work at all. I will leave the last for you to look at. Here's FA to the left and down and displacement down. Here's FA to the left and down and displacement to the left. All right, so that's it for quantifying work and energy. Next up, we'll look at elasticity and elastic behavior, and then conservation of energy. Until then, enjoy. See you again soon.